Um, this is uh, my second attempt of doing this video, and um, I wanted you guys to hear what I had to say. Uh, I know there's a generational divide, a generational gap, so a lot of people who are subscribed to me don't even really know who I'm talking about. But today we really truly lost a comedic legend, a true legend in the field of entertainment. And with today's emphasis on youth and frivolity and sexuality and really just a lot of nothingness, um, there won't be much talk about him as it should be. Maybe if, you know, if he had passed back in 1990 or in the 80s, it would be a bigger deal. But trust me, um, we lost a legend. I had just referenced him in a video I did a couple of days ago when I was talking about how comedy can sow the truth uh, as far as racism is concerned. And uh, last night I was just on the internet, on YouTube, searching for some Brickles material, and I saw the video of him at the uh, Washington Gala back in 1985 when Reagan was president. He called that the highlight of his career in hindsight. Then to find out just today that the man they called the the merchant of venom, the, you know, uh, Mr. Warmth, the greatest insult comic of all time, John Bickles passed away. He was 90 and he died of kidney failure. I had been seeing Don Rickles uh, recently, the last two years or so, and I could see that he was in failing health. But he had been, you know, he'd been soldiering on, still touring. You know he didn't need the money, uh, being Jewish and all. I just threw that in there. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, he didn't need the money, um, but he liked to perform. But you could see he was not the same. Um, oftentimes he sounded a little bit weak. He didn't have the same strong delivery. I did see a performance recently where he sounded pretty good, but you could tell his health was failing. Um, but Rickles was born in 1926 in Queens, New York. Um, he enlisted in the Navy in World War II, served in World War II, had an honorable discharge. And he entered showbiz in the late 1940s. Uh, he was a, 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 initially he was a traditional stand-up comic, but he noticed that he had a knack for insulting members of the audience that were heckling him. And... Um, the audience reacted so positive to being insulted that he incorporated it slowly into his performance until ultimately it became pretty much primarily his performance was going around insulting people. And um, he had a knack for calling people who were hecklers hockey pucks. <laughs> and um, his career began to build momentum. He, he met Frank Sinatra sometime in the mid-1950s and when you have connections to Frank Sinatra in the entertainment world, you're going to take off. And uh, in the late 1950s, he started going into movies, uh, some parts comedy. If I'm not mistaken, he was in the movie It's a Mad, 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 Mad World in uh, 1963. But he also was in some dramatic parts uh, in, in some movies. Many of you in my generation remember that he was in Casino, the Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci movie. Well, I think he played the... Uh, the casino manager who worked under Robert De Niro. Uh, but what I always remember him for is are the Dean Martin roasts in the 1960s and 1970s that he killed. He absolutely killed. Um, and um, I always remember him too for being one of the most in demand uh, television. Uh, Guest, whether it be Late Night with Johnny Carson or with Jay Leno or David Letterman or Merv Griffin or whatever. He had his own television program at one point in the 1970s. Um, and let me say this too. He would make fun of everybody about anything. Ethnicity, all of that. I never got offended listening to Rickles because I always knew it was part of the shtick. I always knew it was part of what he did. He made fun of everybody, whether you were black, whether you were Mexican, whether you were Hispanic, Irish, uh, Italian, Jewish, like he did, like he was. It didn't matter. 
And sometimes I see in the comment section people say things while I'm looking at Rickles ribbon, uh, Nipsey Russell saying, you know, you know, Nipsey, I really, I really do admire the blacks, but you're doing it, you're overdoing it a little bit too much. You know, talking about the fact that he was dark skinned, and that was that was funny to me because I knew he didn't mean any malice when he said that. In comedy, there shouldn't really be any boundaries as long as everybody knows that it's all in good fun. That's the difference. Do not compare when great artists like Red Fox and Don Rickles, all right, Jackie Gleason. All these, you know, comics of the past and in the future, you know, in the present, you know, when these comics are working, don't use that as an excuse for what Bill O'Reilly did to Maxine Waters because it's not the same thing. Don Rickles is a comedian who has no ill malice when he, you know, malice when he said these things. Bill O'Reilly said it to be derisive of Maxine Waters. It's not a comedy shtick. He's a he's an asshole. All right. At 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 best he's an asshole. At worst, which I really believe, I think Bill O'Reilly is a bigoted asshole. Okay, but this video is not about Bill O'Reilly. It's about Don Rickles. Um, Don Rickles, even though he had that that image of you know this insult guy who go around, he was one of the nicest men in show business. All right. Um, he always ended every one of his performances by breaking the fourth wall, getting out of character, and showing what he truly felt about the person that he was insulting. And he was almost universally, he was pretty much universally beloved by everybody in the entertainment industry. And we truly have lost one of the giants of comedy, in my opinion. Rest in peace, Don Rickles.